There's another way that you can understand how recursive functions, and actually functions in general work, if the functions in question are completely functional and lack all side effects. And so if you have a function that doesn't have any side effects, you can basically figure out what it's going to do through a process called substitution. Now as soon as we put in print statements, or reading input from the user, or uh, doing having vars and doing assignments, substitution no longer works. And then you have to fall back on, on the other form of tracing. But as long as the function that you're talking about is just calculating something and giving you back a value, then this process called substitution is actually a very good way to think about the process of what a program is going to do. To help illustrate this, I've taken our two simplest math functions. These were recursive functions that uh, you know, did calculations for us. There is no printing, there is no reading, there is no assignment in here. <clears throat> so both of these will work very well for substitution. And the general idea of substitution is we have a set of rules. So think of each of the constructs that we have come up with so far. Since we're not allowing assignments, we basically have things that are vals. And so if we have some variable that equals five, and then I have an expression someplace like a times a, what substitution says is that I can substitute in for a whatever my value is. And then of course if I have an expression like this that just has constants in it, I can substitute its actual value in its place. Okay, so we have vals. What else do we have? We do have the if expressions. So we have if some condition, then expression one, <coughs> else expression two. Well, we should be able to substitute things into this condition to the point where we can figure out if this condition is true or false. If the condition is true, then we replace this entire thing with just expression one, else we replace the entire thing with just expression two. That should be fairly straightforward. When the condition is true, this is the value we're going to get. When the condition is false, this is the value we're going to get. The other thing that we have is a def. Okay, and so, for example, let's go back to one of our first things that we defined. It was the square function. And so if I do square of five, we substitute this with the body here where all the x's are replaced by the five. So the square of five literally becomes five times, uh, oops, sorry, five times five under substitution. And since that only has constants in it, that becomes 25. So these are the basic rules for substitution. So given those rules, what happens to a call like calling fact of five. And for the substitution, I'm actually gonna put subsequent lines going down. Well, fact of five should be replaced by this, but where every instance of n is replaced by a five. So it's if five less than two, one, else five times the fact of five minus one. Okay, at this point we can, and technically we should do one substitution at a time. I can look at this and say, this is false. And because that is false, this entire if is replaced by just the second part, which is five times the fact of five minus one, which is five times the fact of four. And then that fact of four needs to be replaced by that if again. So we have the five times still. Five times what? Well, five times if four is less, is less than two, one, else four times the fact of four minus one. That condition is also false. So we have five times four times the fact of four minus one which is just five times four times the fact of three. 
one more step here, and then I'll feel comfortable that everyone watching the video understands what we're doing. Once again, I replace it with the full value that is on the uh, right-hand side of the equals for the function. So three less than two, one, else three times the fact of three minus one, which of course gives us five times four times three times the fact of three minus one. And if you repeat this process, we wind up getting five times four times three times two times one, because the last the last time that we get to there, that gets replaced by times the quantity if one is less than two, one, else one times the fact of one minus one. But in this case, the condition is true. So we get five times four times three times two times, and when we replace it with the value that is the first expression in the if, we get that. Now we have all constants, and so we just multiply it out and get 120. And it turns out the, that one of the beautiful things about this is the order in which I do the substitutions really doesn't matter. I picked a certain order here, so at this point, I could have identified that this was false and done that, or I could have said, hey, I'm just gonna do five minus one uh, and go to the next step. At this point, I could have multiplied the five times the four and realized that that was 20, or I could continue exp uh, expanding out the function. In this case, I continued expanding out the function because I thought that was better for illustrating what was going on, but the reality is the substitution doesn't care. It's perfectly happy either way. The other function would do something similar. So sum squares, let's just go with three so that we can possibly trace the whole thing out. Well, that expands to if three is less than two, one, else three times three plus some squares of three minus two. I'm actually going to substitute for this is false. I'm going to do that side and I'm going to do the math. So we have three times three plus some squares of, that shouldn't be, why do I have a minus two in there? R1, whoa. Clearly I had a typo in this function. Of three minus one, which is three times three plus the sum squares, sorry, of two. I was gonna just go ahead and do that substitution there. Which is the if of two less than two, one, else two times two plus some squares of two minus one, which is three times three plus the two times two plus the sum squares of one. And that simply because becomes three times three plus two times two plus one. It's not one times one because, uh, well, I actually skipped one step in here. This should be the quantity if one is less than two, one else one times one plus some squares of one minus one. But because this condition is true, I replace the whole if with just a single one there. And now I have a bunch of constants, so I can just say 14 when I evaluate them all out. So once again, if your function is kind of a pure function, it has no side effects, no prints, no reads, no uh, assignments, this is a nice way to go through thinking about what it actually does. Unfortunately, if you throw in some print statements, if you throw in some reading from input, this or, or doing assignments, this style of thinking about the problem will, will break down and it won't give you things because, as I said, substitution can be done in whatever order you want, but things like the printing and reading 
what you actually do winds up being altered and the assignments by the order in which you decide to, to process things.